he went on to he went through slavery, he went through family feuds, he went through uh, temptation and seduction because of desires, he went through uh, even financial uh, uh, temptations, and he went through power temptations. When he became like a, like the king of kings, he was just like a minister in the royal court. All these kind of trials you can think of. He went through this, alayhi salatu wasalam, and one of these trials even, subhanAllah, the trial of revenge. I mean, when you see someone who caused you all this pain in your life, and you are in, in a position where you are able and capable of taking revenge from them, would you do that? Yusuf, alayhi salam, displayed that perfect example, alayhi salatu wasalam. Another example, Musa. Musa was tried. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran as well, قال, uh, قال Allah ta'ala, يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تكونوا كالذين آذوا موسى فبرأه الله مما قال. All you who believe do not be like uh, like the people of Musa, like those who uh, who hurt basically. Uh, Musa عليه السلام they spoke ill about Musa عليه السلام فبرأه الله الله سبحانه وتعالى bring him brought him out of this innocent عليه الصلاة والسلام. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned the hadith actually the kind of trial that he had to go through with Bani Israel. And one of his greatest trials is the disobedience. On an inconsistency of belief of Bani Israel themselves. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was coming out from, Beth, from uh, the battle of Ahud and he was suffering the, the injuries and the pain, he said, Rahim Allahu Akhi Musa, Fakad Udiya, Bi Akhara Min Dalik, Fasabar. May Allah have mercy, my brother Musa, alayhi salam. He was hurt and he was tried with much more than this and he was patient. So Musa, alayhi salam, had to go through the trials, although he was strong and powerful man, but he also went through all these trials, alayhi salatu wa salam. Yahya السلام. and Yahya السلام, trial was so severe that it ended up with what? Losing his own life. He was killed. And that was an Nabi, a prophet. And he was also killed. Then Muhammad وسلم, and we all know the struggle that he had to go through وسلم, from his own people, from his own uncle Abu Lahab and rejecting him in public. The severity of the, of the uh, kind of uh, 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 torture that his, his, uh, his followers had to go through and he himself sallallahu alayhi wa suffered some of these actually punishment that they have, they have put on, uh, on on the followers of Islam so he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a great leader and he, jumped, that he showed that, that perfect example for being perseverant and patient through many many trials sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so being a human being these messages being humans uh, they would have to go through trials and their trials were the hardest trials why is that? To give us an example, that if you ever go through any trial, you need to remember, your trial compared to what the Prophet says has to go through was nothing. And they were tried because they were humans, and they will show us to, to show to persevere in patience during those times. The messengers, we know about messengers, that they, they did human work. Means when they walked in life, they walked like any other human being. So they were shepherds. The messenger of Bukhari, the messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one time. He went with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum and he was collecting Ud al Iraq, which is the miswak, the, 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 the toothbrush the Prophet used to use. So he was collecting some of this fresh uh, from the trees. And as he was collecting, he instructed some of the companions, some of the people. He says, Alaykum bil min Check that dark one because that's the fresh one. So some of them they were surprised. How, he, how did he know that? Because this is not anybody, not anyone can would know that. He has to be someone who lived in the desert, maybe being a shepherd around these trees. Qalu ya Rasulullah, do you know about that? This means do you know about this? This issue means you must have uh, been a shepherd or something. Qalu na'am. Wa ma min nabiin illa wa qadra al ghanam. Means every messenger, every prophet who was sent, he 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 grazed and he he raised the uh, sheep. Meaning he had to go and raise the sheep and live sometimes in the pasture with, the, with these animals. Another Nabi that was, his story was mentioned in the Quran, and he raised also uh, uh, animals and sheep, who was Musa alayhi salam. We mentioned that in, in the Salah, the recitation of the Salah, when uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him about the staff that he had in his hand. Wama tilka bi yaminika ya Musa, qala hiya asai. Allah asked him, what is that in your hand, ya Musa? He says, this is my staff. Uh, Atawakka wa alayha wa hushu biha ala ghanim. That I use it also to, you know, to bring food and just the, the uh, uh, leaves for my for my sheep. So he mentioned that Musa alayhi salam he also raised and he raised uh, sheep alayhi salatu uh, They also worked like artisans and they work uh, uh, they worked handy craftsmen. Uh, one of them was Zakaria, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described Zakaria. He says, "Well, kana Zakaria najjar." Zakaria was a carpenter, which means he worked with his own hand alayhi salatu wasallam. 
Dawood was a blacksmith, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنْعَةَ لَبُوسٍ لَكُمْ لِتُحْسُنَكُمْ مَنْ بَأْسِكُمْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ And uh, we have taught him to the making of coats, which is basically armors. This is basically armors for the war, to protect you, so you'd be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was Dawood alayhi salam who became king after that. Still, he would earn his living from the work of his own hand alayhi salatu wa salam. They did labor work, like Musa. When Musa, he, uh, uh, he escaped from Fir'aun and he met those two girls who were trying to feed, to uh, reach the water with their animals, then he helped them with that. One of the girls went, her, uh, went back to Musa saying, Inna abi ajra ma lana. My father is calling you to come so you could, you know, he pay you back for what you, the service you have done for us. And then she suggested that her father hires Musa السلام, and he did offer him a, a deal. He says, I will give you one of my daughters in marriage if you make a deal with me to serve me for 8 or 10 years. So he chose to fulfill the term والسلام, so he would work with his own hand, Musa السلام. Some of the Anbiya, they became politicians or at least leaders and rulers, such as Yusuf السلام, he worked in the, in the royal court in Egypt. And Sulaiman himself was a king, uh, Dawood was a king as well, and many other Anbiya from Bani Israel were also rulers and leaders of their own people. So the Anbiya overall being humans, they just lived a life of a human being in that sense. What else do we know about the human qualities of these Anbiya? We know that they lived a normal human life. Like what? They got married and had children. And we know that some of the Anbiya, that were explicitly were mentioned in the Quran to have children, was Ibrahim He had his son Ismail and then Ishaq. We had Yaqub, who had Asbaq, uh, 12 of his children, والسلام, and many other Anbiya as well. Even Muhammad وسلم, he got married and he had children. والسلام, they got hungry, they ate, and they walked in the marketplace. And Allah mentioned that also in Surah Al Furqan, that they would walk in the Aswaq, they would walk in the, in, in the marketplaces. They got hungry. How many hadith you have read in the seer of the Prophet وسلم, that the Messenger of Allah would be extremely hungry that he had to press his stomach and tie a stone or rock on his stomach Salawatullahi wasalam alayhi. He would do that وسلم, being hungry and then when the food is served he would eat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He also walked in the marketplace and he bought, he bought stuff and he, he, uh, uh, he sends people to buy stuff for him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That to show them that they are actually normal human beings living a normal life. They fell ill and they recovered. Let's the, take the example of Ayyub and the example of Muhammad Even Ibrahim he says, And when I fall ill, he is the one who gives me, he gives me healing. Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's from the words of, of Ibrahim They worked chores at home. And when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, she asked, she was asked about Rasulullah She said, قال, قالت, he was a human being like any other, any other human being. She said that he used to milk the goat, he used to sweep the house, and he would fix his own clothes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would serve himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he's around the house, he would help, and he would act like, like any other man, and they died. Which is one of the unique qualities of human beings. That they also died. They're not angels, and they're not gods. So they are human beings and they die. And we all, we all know that all the Anbiya are dead now except for Isa السلام, in a state of Wafa, which is a, between the, uh, the, it's a special actually state that for Isa السلام, until he comes back and then he will live his normal life until the end of time and he will die like anybody else alayhi salatu wasalam. So we know that the Anbiya will live very normal life. Again, this is for us to learn from their example. One of these implications of sending a human messenger that they possess neither divine nor angelic uh, uh, qualities. No one can claim that these anbiya would be would be uh, divine or angels. Allah subhanahu wa taala gave an example of Isa alayhi because specifically Isa alayhi is the one has the most controversy over his divinity. قال الله عز وجل وقال الله يا عيسى ابن مريم أأنت قلت للناس تهدوني وأمي إلهين من دون الله قال سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق إن كنت قلته فقد علمته تعلم ما في نفسه ولا علم ما في نفسك إنك أن تعلم الغيوب And behold Allah says to Isa عليه السلام Allah سبحانه وتعالى is asking Isa and will ask Isa have you, or is it, Was it your command to ask your people to take you and your mother as gods besides Allah سبحانه وتعالى 
And Isa alayhi salam will immediately disassociate himself from that statement. He says, no, 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 I didn't do that. It is not my right to tell people to worship me or worship my mother. It's not my, actually my right to, to say that. In kuntu, in kuntu if I have said that, you should have known it, Ya Allah, my Lord. You know all the secrets, Ya Allah. And then Allah subhanahu says, from the words of Isa alayhi salam, ma kuntu lahum illa ma amartani bih, that uh, never said uh, I to them, uh, except what you, you, you command me to say. And he says, anu'budullaha rabbi wa rabbakum, that you worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. So he also, he commanded his people to worship Allah, his Lord, and the Lord of his mother, uh, alayhi salatu wa salam. So we know that they have no divinities and they don't have these angelic qualities. Unfortunately, some people, and we're going to talk about that inshallah later on, uh, that some people when they talk about the Anbiya, out of excessive and extreme love, specifically for Rasulullah wasallam, they might attribute some quality that shouldn't be attributed to the Prophet wasallam. They're doing it out of love to Rasulullah wasallam, but they're taking him out of his actually human status, sallallahu wasallam. So the Prophet وسلم, in now uh, uh, being dead, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't have that capacity of helping you to go and you call him wherever you are, asking the messenger for help and assistance. That is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who actually relieve you and alleviate the suffering of the people. And the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some people they claim that he was created from the Nur of Allah Azza Wa Jal, special light, divine light of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And other people they say that he, when he used to walk, he would walk without shadow. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I believe if people saw someone without shadow, instead of actually considering this person to be of, of specific qualities, they might actually freak out. Knowing that this is not a normal human being. But him being Bashar, as Allah says about him in the Quran, makes actually all his qualities to be human qualities, except for these special qualities that we will talk about, inshaAllah ta'ala, next week, uh, special for the Anbiya. And these are exclusive matters given to the Anbiya, alayhi salatu wasalam. Things we will talk about next week, inshaAllah ta'ala. Now, one of these implications also of sending a human messenger 